Welcome back everyone to Learning by Teaching. Today we're in Dynamics and we're going to solve problem 14.25, okay? It says, the five pound cylinder is falling from A with a speed VA equal to 10 feet per second onto the platform. Determine the maximum displacement of the platform caused by the collision. The spring has an unstretched length of 1.75 feet and is originally kept in compression by the one foot long cables attached to the platform. Neglect the mass of the platform and spring and any any energy loss during the collision. All right, so what we can see here in this graph is that we have this cylinder and this cylinder is falling and it's going to hit this um, platform that is um, attached to this spring, okay? So what they want us to determine is determine the maximum displacement, okay, of this platform. And this maximum displacement will happen when we are all the way down and we are just about to start going up meaning that at our last moment when our velocity is zero that's when we want to find the displacement okay so that's also telling us that the velocity at our second point is equal to zero so as i always like to start this problem is first writing my givens they're giving us that the weight of the cylinder is equal to five pounds and from the weight, we can calculate that the mass of this cylinder is equal to the weight divided by our gravity, okay? And the units are going to be in slugs, but we don't usually write that unit down. So let's leave it like this. This is our mass, and we're giving the velocity, our initial velocity is equal to 10 feet per second. All right, now they're also telling us that the spring unstretched. So when it's unstretched, is equal to 1.75. However, it is compressed right now. And it's compressed to one feet, okay? This is in feet as well. We have, so if we, make the small difference is a total of 0 0.75 feet compression okay I just want to have that out there now in order to solve this problem well we're going to utilize our chapter 14 which is basically the principle of work and energy so we're going to utilize this principle where we have the equation given by the book when 14.7 we got the kinetic plus the work has to be equal to the final kinetic, okay? Now, the kin by kinetic, I mean the one-half mass times velocity squared. Since we need to calculate the work in here, we need to add all the forces, then we need to know what's the work of a spring, okay? Of a spring force. Now, we're going to utilize these equations, but we're going to need to draw a little free body diagram. So we're going to have a free body diagram and this happens at the moment that we want to evaluate at the mass maximum displacement. So now my cylinder looks something, let's just simulate like as a square. Now my cylinder will experience the force that the spring is exerting and will experience the weight of this cylinder as well. Okay, so these are the only two forces that we have. So, so far, we, uh, it's go uh, we're going to only calculate the work given by these two forces. But the last thing I want to explain over here is that when this cylinder is falling down, our spring will be compressed. Something like this. So, we will have this delta in displacement that we're going to call it S, okay for displacement so we don't know how much it is that's what the question is asking so let's just start looking for it so if we want to utilize the principle of work and energy let's just start with this we're going to have one half the mass so we have one half the mass which is 5 over 32.2 times the velocity square which is 10 feet per second then we're gonna have plus and we need to do the summatory of works. So let's just start with the 
first one is our force by given by the weight. So the work is going to be the weight, which is a force, five pounds, times the distance that it traveled. Well, the distance is going to be this three feet plus the addition of this S. Okay, so we're going to have three feet plus the addition of my S. Okay, and then the second force that we have is this spring force. And for that spring force, we're going to utilize this equation. Therefore, we're going to go ahead. We're going to have minus. Then let's open a bracket. One half the spring constant K, which is 400. And just to let you know, it was given in here in the graph. Times the dis second displacement, meaning the displacement that the spring experience final, the final spring is going to be, well, this spring experienced this S. However, this spring was also affected by this amount, 0 0.75 before, okay? So we're going to have 0 0.75 given plus our distance S, okay? And this should be square minus one half of my spring constant times the initial well initially it was compressed to one feet meaning that again we have this compression of 0 0.75 already given to this spring force and we are going to square this okay so now this should be equal to and so we're here in the equal to and then the kinematic of our final However, our final, as we stated before, the velocity in, is going to be equal to zero. Therefore, our my right side of the equation will be equal to zero. So now, all we have is an equation and the only unknown we have is S in here and in here. So we can try to simplify this. So uh, let's try to simplify this number. It's going to be equal to seven point seven six four then we're going to have plus five pounds multiplied by three will give me fifteen plus five multiplied by s i'm going to get an s with these little corners in here just to not confuse ourselves uh I'm sorry we're going to have minus and we're going to open the brackets again we're going to have two hundred when I multiply this one half times 400, 200 multiplied by these two numbers square. And when we FOIL that out, we will have to have 0 0.75 square plus 1.5 multiplied by S plus S square. Okay, then we'll have minus 200 again multiply by 0 0.75 square all right so now what we can see is that this is going to be 200 multiplied by 0 0.75 square in here this first multiplication with this one and this one so this and this will cancel out okay so let's cancel it out from here we're going to cancel this and that but then let's not forget that we're going to have this 200 also multiplied by 1.5 and also by this. So let's write everything together again. Let's add up this one and this one. So we'll have 7.764 plus 15. And that will give me a total of 22.764 plus 5s minus open the parentheses. And we're going to have... 300 s minus I'm um, sorry plus 200 s at square and all this should be equal to zero so let's keep solving for it if we well we only have 200 s square but we have a negative of it so we're gonna have a negative 200 s square we have 5s minus 300s will give us negative 
295 S and then last we're going to have plus 22.764 and all this should be equal to zero. So now what we have is a quadratic equation and what we can use are multiple ways of solving this. So I'm going to utilize my calculator and as soon as I do that it's going to give me two answers and the first answer is going to be 0 0.07 350 feet and the second answer is going to be negative 1.55 feet all right so which one of these two are the correct ones well let's take it out so initially we're expecting this cylinder to go down and this distance to be positive meaning going in this direction right just as the direction of our velocity an amount less than one feet and if we pay attention over here we have a positive distance that is less than one feet therefore we can forget about this answer and we will know that our answer for this question is going to be 0 0.07350 feet okay so I hope you guys liked the video please push the like button subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one